crystal field splitting of square planar complex. Okay, so before going for the splitting of square planar complexes, let's see what is the structure of square planar. So in the crystal field theory, we know that the metal complex is considered as a point charge of a positive ion and along the x and y planes along the x and y planes the ligands will approach towards the metal ion so the point positive charge will be the metal and point negative charge of the ligand will approach in this direction okay so accordingly the splitting will also be done so we have seen the splitting of the tetrahedral and octahedral complexes and we know that if the ligand is approaching towards a particular orbital that orbital will exert more and more repulsion from the surrounding orbitals of the d and that will exert the more energy the more crystal field stabilization energy it will gain so let's see how it happens with the square planar okay so square planar is a planar geometry along the x and y axis okay this is the z axis x axis y axis okay so this is the square planar structure so the, in the crystal field theory the square planar complex is not considered as a separate geometry but rather it is considered as a modification of octahedral geometry itself octahedral geometry itself because in the octahedral we know that okay so this is the octahedral and these are the planes this is z plane this is x and this is y plane so in this the z axis plane is not to be filled by the any ligands that means the octahedral complex is going to be formed if the six ligands are going to approach towards the metal atom but if the four ligands are approaching towards the central metal atom then the square planar is the resultant so the ligands which are approaching by the z axis will be neglected or otherwise will be not considered okay so here we should consider the two major points so one of the point is if the ligand is approaching from the xy plane then the orbitals present in xy plane will exert the more crystal field stabilization energy because it will it will experience the more repulsive energy from the surrounding d orbitals so that is the reason in the octahedral splitting we know that we know that the octahedral splitting is eg and t2g that is dx square minus y square and dz square and then dxy dyz dxz okay so this is the normal ground level this thing and this is the octahedral split octahedral split because on the z axis it is no ligand is been approaching the z orbital or the z the orbitals present on a z axis are will exert the less energy and because the ligands are approaching only by the xy plane the x square minus y square will experience the high g level or increased energy level so it will further split into in this way dx square and dz square in this way it will experience and in the same way the t2g group also will experience the same effect thereby the dxy orbital will experience the more energy than the already split t2g already split t2g group and this will be the tyz and this will be the t 
Txz. So it is okay now. This kind of splitting will lead to the formation of tetragonal structure. This splitting will give us the tetragonal structure. But we we know that we already knew that the dz square in the in the z plane, the second point we need to consider here it is in the z plane, there is no ligand is, is going to approach towards the central metal atom. So the dz square will further lose the energy and it will drop to even further to the low level, even lesser than the T2G group and it will split in this way. So dz square will be here and because on the dyz and dxz again this is not having any sort of ligands approaching towards the zz plane so it will also decreases the energy and it will be just above the dz square now so this dxy will increase its energy as on the same plane the electrons are going the ligands are going to approach so it will shows the higher energy than the dz square and dyz and dxy so dxz it is dx so it is dxy so again dz x dx square minus y square will exert further more energy and it will stabilize at this energy level so this in the square i mean thus formed splitting thus formed splitting will leads to the formation of square planar the octahedral structure splits into the tetragonal and further the tetragonal will split into the dx square minus y square and dxy and dyz dxz and dz square in the decreasing order of the energy in this way then it is formed the square planar structure here so if we consider the delta values that is crystal field stabilization energies this is the crystal field stabilization of octahedral that is delta o, and this energy will be crystal field stabilization of square planar it has been donated by delta sp and it is said that the delta sp value is 1.3 times more than delta it is point to be noted so delta sp value is 0.3 0.3 times more than delta o that is octahedral crystal field stabilization energy so in this way the splitting will be done so the most of the times in the splitting of this d orbital in a square planar will affect the following will affect the d8 configuration more okay so in the d8 configuration in the d8 configuration like the metals of nickel 2 plus palladium 2 plus platinum 2 plus copper plus copper plus 3 and AU plus 3 and AG plus 3. These D8, these will have the D8 configuration. This D8 electronic configuration will exhibit the square planar structure most of the times. And square planar structure is not common in all the D1 to D10 configuration, but it is only common for the d8 okay sometimes very occasionally even d9 also shows the d9 also shows the square planar structure like the copper plus 2 silver plus 2 will shows the d9 square planar structure in the d8 structure if you consider dz square dxz dzx then dxy then furthermore energy of dx square minus y square in this way the splitting has been done just now we have seen now the d8 configuration will be filled in this way so in the d8 configuration the square planar 
most of the times they are low spin complexes. These square planar complexes are low spin complexes and these will exhibit the paramagnetic sorry diamagnetic nature because they don't have the free electrons. So in this way the square planar splitting will be done the D8 electronic configuration. One of the biggest application of the crystal field theory is the finding of the magnetic momentum of the given electronic configuration or the given complex. So the magnetic momentum the magnetic moment mu is given by square root of n into n plus 2 that is Bm. In Bm it is, a, it is shown as a units. So here n is number of unpaired electrons. Number of unpaired electrons. If the number of unpaired electrons are found to be 1, then the mu is equal to 1 into 1 plus 2 that is square root of 3 that is somewhere around 1.73 bm. Likewise, even for the two electrons, we can calculate mu is equal to square root of 2 into 2 plus 2 that will be 2 plus 2 will be 4, 4 to the 8 that is square root of 8. So, in this way, the magnetic momentum is clearly explained by the crystal field theory. Even based on the number of unpaired electrons in the complex, whether the complex is low spin or high spin complex will be known. As well, color of the complex is clearly mentioned or clearly donated in the crystal field theory.